we were searching remote caves in Kalimantan, Borneo, an area home to some of the world's earliest figurative rock art. And in searching the caves with this amazingly complex and uh, figurative rock art, we excavated uh, down to a depth of about a metre beneath the surface of a cave um, to find a uh, fully articulated and deliberately buried adult human. And this discovery uh, that we've uh, unveiled at Liang Tebo Cave is now the world's earliest evidence for a successful surgical operation. These uh, fragments of the left tibia and fibula, which emerged during about a 11 days of a meticulous archeological excavation just of this neat burial feature, have preserved the remodeled bone of what's called a curved surface, which is the neat oblique amputation surface that matches modern clinical examples of amputation surgery. So in, in 2018, we published a paper where we show that some of the rock art in those caves there is at least 40,000 years old. So, so essentially we set up a project to find out who made that rock art because we had no idea. Prior to the, uh, our discovery of this, uh, the earliest evidence for a surgical procedure was associated with a Neolithic male from modern day France from around 7,000 years ago. This individual lived and was buried by 31,000 years ago. So there's a 24,000 year gap between the next earliest evidence for a surgical procedure. And most of that surgical uh, evidence elsewhere is associated with larger settled agricultural communities. It's completely unlike any infectious injury that um, we have clinical evidence of. And it's that remodeled bone which uh, confirms this as being a surgical operation that in fact where certain happened to this individual when they were a child probably in their pre-teen years and that that they survived that surgical procedure amputation rates were almost a guarantee to be fatal prior to the first world war so this success pushes back that to 31,000 years ago these are pre-agricultural foraging communities that hunted and gathered in the rainforests of Eastern Sunda, the Eurasian supercontinent, and they were regularly painting figurative rock art. These distal fragments of their left tibia and fibula were deliberately amputated, implying that the surgeon or surgeons very likely had a advanced grasp of negotiating vessels, veins, skins, tissues, and muscles. They very likely had a good indication or, or awareness of the need for disinfection, uh, antibiotic treatments. The majority of plants' uh, biological diversity is occurring in this area of the Earth's tropics. So there's a reasonable argument, a reasonable case to support that this community probably had a good grasp of some of those medicinal plant resources given that we have a preserved record of advanced surgery lacking skeletal signals of infection. So there's probably a good case that they had some understanding of the economic and botanical uh, resources to prevent and, and uh, manage at least infection. So there's a huge range of implications that very much change the known human history of medical technology, medical understanding, and in fact, social care. This person was a valued member of their community. As a child, they, they were a, successfully had their lower left leg surgically removed. That only became a medical norm in modern society in most parts of the world after the uh, invention, of, invention of antiseptics within the last century or so and modern medical procedures. The sediments were dated to all the stratigraphy, but the remains was very challenging to date. So we had to do another technique called electron spin resonance to actually get the age of the fossil. And uh, it turned out to be quite old. We were able to, to get the age of around 27,000 
um, plus and minus um, uh, an error, which matches the edges that we get from the stratigraphy uh, that get us to conclude that this remain is around 31,000 years old.